O Queen of Heaven, be joyful, Alleluia, because he whom so meetly thou bearest, Alleluia, hath arisen as he promised, Alleluia. Pray for us to the Father, Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary, Alleluia, for the Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who by the resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ, didst vouchsafe to give gladness unto the world, grant, we beseech thee, that we, being holpen by the Virgin Mary, his mother, may attain unto the joys of everlasting life, to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ is risen from the dead, and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I'm hard pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, Oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when grain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace, at once I fall asleep. For only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had been foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him an habitation my father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war, the Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his host hath he cast into the sea. His chosen captains are also drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank into the bottom as a stone. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. 
Thy right hand, O Lord, hath dashed in pieces the enemy. Who is like thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praise, doing wonders? Thou stretchest out thy right hand, the earth swallowed them. Thou in thy mercy hast led forth the people, which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation. Thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thine inheritance, in the place, O Lord, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in, in the sanctuary, O Lord, which thy hands have established. The Lord shall reign forever, forever and ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. For all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he is revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually doth cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee, the Father of an infinite majesty, thine admirable true and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst humble thyself to be born of a virgin. When thou hast overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God, in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints, in glory everlasting. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The word of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In today's gospel here on the third Sunday of Easter, we continue to hear about 
encounters with Jesus after his resurrection. On Easter Day, we heard about Mary Magdalene at the tomb, mistaking Jesus for the gardener, and when he calls out her name, and only then does she realize it's really Jesus. Last week, we heard about Thomas refusing to accept that it really was Jesus, alive and in the flesh, unless he could put his hands in Jesus' wounds. Once he does, he knows it's really Jesus, and Thomas's faith is invigorated. And today we hear about Jesus showing himself to his disciples, eating broiled fish with them, despite their disbelief and their fear. Over these Sundays, we hear about just how stunning and unimaginable Jesus' resurrection is. It's shocking. But we also hear from these encounters that Jesus was very much himself. He was not a ghost. He was himself. He was breathing, talking, moving, and even eating. It is in hearing Jesus' voice, touching his wounds, and in sharing a meal together that the eyes of his followers were opened, and they understood that the same Jesus who had been their teacher and friend and who was tortured and crucified was the same Jesus standing before them in the flesh and very much alive. Through senses other than just the eyes, the disciples understand that the risen Jesus is real and that he is recognizable. After his followers finally get that Jesus is alive, Jesus tells them their mission. Jesus tells his disciples that they are to go from Jerusalem into all the world to proclaim the good news of his resurrection, news of repentance and forgiveness of sins in his name. It's the same work that we are called to do today. It's our Christian vocation. It's something we take on in our baptism and in our confirmation. When we think about our baptismal covenant, we sometimes forget that there's more than uh, just the two last questions, which we all love, those that say, seeking and serving Christ in all persons, loving our neighbor as ourselves, and seeking justice and peace and respecting the dignity of every human being. And those are very important ones. But before those, there are more. We affirm that with God's help, we will continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers. We affirm that with God's help, we will persevere in resisting evil, and that when we fall into sin, we will repent and return to the Lord. We affirm that with God's help, we will proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ. These are the promises of a resurrection people. These are the promises of a people who know that God's love is unconditional, and yet God's love is not without expectations. Now, repentance can be one of those scary church words that has been used by certain sects of the Christian religion to scare people into faith. Scaring anyone into faith is not acceptable because that's not how faith works. God's love won't be manipulated. To understand words like repentance and conversion better, it's helpful to know that they have the exact same meaning in Greek and Latin. They simply mean to turn around, or to put it another way, to make a new beginning. Repentance is to acknowledge that we are heading in a way that leads away from God and being reoriented towards God. It's understanding that we cannot do this on our own. I think most of us are able to look at our own lives and we can identify the things which bring us closer to the love of God and those things which separate us from God. We are constantly called to make new beginnings with those things that draw us closer to God and to let go of those things that keep us apart. And we know through Jesus' promise that God will always forgive us, and it's Jesus' life, death, and resurrection that make all of those new beginnings possible. 
Jesus also tells his disciples to proclaim forgiveness in his name to those who acknowledge a need for making new beginnings. Jesus' life, death, and resurrection is a pledge that God will forgive our sins. Forgiveness and reconciliation are major signs of those who bear the baptism of Jesus. Forgiveness and reconciliation are the signs of a resurrection people. Jesus tells the disciples before his death that their love for each other will be the way by which others know that they are followers of Jesus. Our ability to forgive and to be reconciled to one another is a direct result of our being forgiven and being reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. And Jesus prays for us, even now, to be at one with each other, as he and the Father are one. What sets the good news of Jesus apart from all other religions and philosophies is that it is not about self-transcendence. It's about our need for a savior, because we know and acknowledge that we have no power to help ourselves. It's reported that George Bernard Shaw once joked that there was nothing more frightening to him than being himself for all eternity. To be baptized into the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus is an acknowledgement that we die to our old self and that we become a new creation in him. For as Paul tells us in Romans, if we are buried with Christ in a death like his, surely we will also be raised with Christ in a resurrection like his. In our baptism, we are made part of Christ's body and marked as his own forever. Certain areas of the church have weaponized the gospel and turned uh, it in a way of controlling other people. In attempting to distance ourselves from their radicalized forms of gaslighting and manipulation, the church has too often neglected to talk about the real good news of Jesus Christ. The good news of Jesus cannot be manipulated, mangled, or hijacked. There's just too much at risk. We as Episcopalians need to get better at developing language of what sharing this good news means and what the resurrection of Jesus Christ means for us. I think churches that don't do this will continue to face decline until we get back on track in this regard. The resurrection is all about God's reconciling love for us as God's people. Here again from the epistle of John See what love the Father has given, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is, and all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. We make choices as followers of Jesus. We make these decisions as individuals, as the church, as communities, as nations. We have a choice to be a crucifixion people or a resurrection people. A crucifixion people means we will always make choices that lead to bitterness, resentment, malice, hatred, evil, and war. A crucifixion people are entitled and always insist on being right. But a resurrection people, knowing that they are firmly planted in the love of God through Jesus Christ, make choices that lead to deeper relationships, to joy, to hope in God, to a growing faith, openness to possibility, trust, and sharing abiding love for one another. Which do we want to be part of? Do we want to be a crucifixion people or a resurrection people? To be a resurrection people also means that we have to be willing to share our faith with others. Like love, when faith is shared, it's not divided, it's multiplied. And we don't know why, but faith comes first and then belief. Our faith turns to belief through God's grace 
but it starts out as faith and then in due course turns to belief. So do you ever pray for your faith to increase? If you do, great, but be ready because you just, you just might get what you pray for. We need to be about building holy habits and faith practices that nurture and help our faith to grow. Jesus' resurrection is stunning and it's counterintuitive. It's illogical and outside of what we know as normal. But that's the whole point. God stopped at nothing, not even the limits of time and space, to show us love. We gather together Sunday by Sunday, week by week, Zoom by Zoom, to give our thanks for the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. His story has been being told for more than 2,000 years. There is something amazing about this, and we are a part of it. He was dead, and God brought him back to life. And God promises the same new life for us when we are baptized into the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. This is the good news. It is good news that the world needs to hear. And it gives us every reason to be a people whose sign is peace, whose way is love, and whose song is Alleluia. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. O God, whose blessed Son did manifest himself to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open, we pray thee, the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work. Through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, who makest us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of thy Son, our Lord, grant us this day such blessing through our worship of thee, that the days to come may be spent in thy favor. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray thee so to guide and govern us by thy Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget thee, but may remember that we are ever walking in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who hast made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and didst send thy blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near, grant that people everywhere may seek after thee and find thee. Bring the nations into thy fold. Pour out thy Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of thy kingdom, through the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Christ the Lord is risen again. Christ has broken every chain. Now through all the world it rings that the Lamb is King of kings. your charity, please pray for all who are ill or in need of intercession, especially remembering Patty, Loretta Gomez, and Elisa Schwartzer. Please pray for all who have fallen ill to COVID-19, for all medical professionals, essential workers, and for an effective vaccine and rollout. Please pray for those with birthdays or anniversaries this week. Please pray for those who are preparing for a marriage or the blessing of a civil marriage and those who are preparing for the birth or adoption of a child. Please pray for seminarians and those preparing for holy orders, especially the Reverend Deacon Lilo Caravera. Please pray for Anglican monastic orders around the world and for an increase in vocations, especially remembering the Society of St. John the Evangelist, Cambridge. Please pray for those who have recently died, especially Alex Hallmark, and for all who have lost their lives to COVID-19. Please pray for those whose years mind falls this week. Raphael Louis Delario, Aaron Natalie Salters, Ruth Harriet. Pray for our parish of St. Paul's that we may be a faithful, loving, and growing community. And in our parochial cycle of prayer, we especially remember today our parish choir and instrumentalists. Please pray for the Diocese of Long Island, for Lawrence Provenzano, our bishop, and for his assisting bishops. And in our diocesan cycle of prayer today, please pray for the daughters of the king. Please pray for the Episcopal Church and our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, and for the Anglican Communion and the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, and for those in the Anglican cycle of prayer today, especially the Church of Ireland. I invite your own prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, We, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. 
but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. And may the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Amen.